what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so just going to make this quick video about halloween kills and what jamie lee curtis had to say recently regarding the mob violence and the mob mentality going into what will transpire in the events of halloween kills and just her recent comments that she made i believe with variety in a new interview where she talks about how the social relevance of this film is mirroring the events of what happened all throughout last year as we know as it pertains to a lot of social issues and how the 2018 film was in and of itself kind of also mirroring what had been going on in the time in that society back in 2018 with the me too movement uh she starts off by saying we got to see in the 2018 movie that Lori had become the personification of trauma it at the time when the me too movement was at its ascent here you have a woman a movie about a woman traumatized for 40 years and she is now rising up and it collided with what was happening globally and it collided with what was happening uh globally so just to go off of that really quick what i what i appreciated the most about halloween 2018 and any movie that does this when it relates to mirroring certain things that may or may not be going on in the in today's world uh culturally socially however you want to describe it i appreciate when you take a subtle approach to it because what you never once hear uttered in this movie is the me too movement you never hear those exact words uttered i you can be direct with what you're wanting to get across uh but i feel like when you let the audience connect movies to what is happening in the world today and they can see the relevance of it themselves i think that makes for a much better experience and with you having certain certain themes played out regarding trauma and recovering from trauma and not letting your trauma basically be the whole center of your life and keeping you from living when you can address those themes in a subtle way and not be very forceful with it it makes for a better viewing experience for you as the audience because you're not sitting there being being uh fist fed a message i'll just say about what's right or what's wrong and that was kind of one of my issues with the 20, 2021 Candyman movie i thought it was well skillfully directed i think that's the strongest element of his how it's directed but again the dialogue was hit or miss for me as i pointed out in my spoiler free review still a very good movie it's just i felt like it could have been written better it wasn't as subtle with what it wanted to address as the 1992 film was by clive barker but she also goes on to say speaking in regards to halloween kills she says that what they've done with the second part of this trilogy is what happens when the rest of the people in the town get angry we made the movie and the uprising that started to happen where people were taken to the streets it was all happening with what was supposed to be the release of our movie because as we know halloween kills would have come out last year and that would have been a very a i guess poetic year to have it released in seeing as how what's happening in this movie was what was happening around the world in a lot of places and it's still happening today today for a lot of people so she goes on to talk about how it's about mob violence so they in, intuited in understanding that the next wave of trauma is rage they wrote a movie about mob violence and five months later the mob started to gather we were supposed to come out a year ago uh so she basically just ends it by saying that's what the next movie is about the town of Haddonfield and all the people in the town who are also victims of michael myers there's a group of people who are very angry at the authorities and are going to take take the law into their own hands now that last bit where she says there are people other people in town who are victims of michael myers the only people that we know that we have returning that we know to be victims of michael were lonnie we actually that wasn't canon in the original film but you know they're changing stuff up for this timeline lonnie uh we know Lin Lindsay and tommy were victims in a way emotionally from what they saw Lori go through while she was trying to protect them that night in the in the 1978 classic film and Marion Chambers, who we know was with Dr. Loomis when they were trying to come get Michael, and he ends up taking their vehicle and driving all the way back to Haddonfield, avoiding uh, them trying to get him in the car and trying to take him to where they were trying to get him to. He takes Marion Chambers' vehicle and goes back to Haddonfield. So we know those characters are returning. So in, rela in relation to these other people, I am curious to see if there's going to be other stories told amongst this mob that might detail some other experiences that went on across the town that michael myers caused that we weren't aware of because we were focusing so much on Lori. uh if they're doing that because they i, I don't think they're going to do that what i would say they could do is we could be introduced to a relative of someone who was related to the guy 
who Michael killed in the original when he took his jumpsuit from him. Maybe we have that person or person related to that individual brought up. For those of you who don't remember, this was the person that we kind of saw. Well, we didn't kind of. We, we did see him. We saw this individual lying in a... I guess the grass is what I'll just recall it as the grass. I haven't watched the movie since last year. We're laying in grass after Dr. Loomis had found a truck, but he didn't see the body. And when Loomis runs off, the camera pans over to this body that clearly was stripped and is dead because Michael took the jumpsuit from this individual. That's how Michael got his jumpsuit. So maybe we meet a relative of that person in this new film and we get to hear about how that affected their life. So there's a lot of things that could be potentially done when it relates to her talking about these other people that have a gripe with Michael Myers. The only other thing I think they could ha they could have a gripe with is these people who are relatives of the people who Michael went to house to house killing in the 2018 film. <laughs> Maybe this is their relatives because Michael, there was that montage where he went house to house killing people. So maybe these are relatives of those people and they're upset about that. And they all are banding together and they're coming to take Michael Myers down. This movie is going to be very entertaining. And I feel like it's not going to be a movie that is forceful. It's not going to be a movie that people are going to sit down and say, oh, there's an agenda behind it. Jamie Lee Curtis can have her sentiments on it, but I don't think that the intent here was to necessarily purposely mirror social themes or the, the current social climate. There's nothing wrong with doing that in horror movies at all whatsoever. Uh, horror movies have always addressed a lot of things going on in the actual world they've done it countless times the movie that i'm thinking about right now that comes to my mind is scream 3 seeing as how we're finding out all this drama that goes on in hollywood some of you might have been in aware of that prior to scream 3 but it's just scream 3 is a very interesting movie to sit back and watch now considering all the things that constantly come out about what's happening with certain people in certain positions in hollywood like a harvey weinstein and so on and so forth but the mob mentality, mob violence, I can't wait to watch it unfold. Next week is going to be the world premiere, September 8th. Jamie Lee Curtis, we know, is going to get that award. It's going to be a very emotional night for her. We will get our first reactions to Halloween Kill, so I can't wait for that. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notification and miss the video. In the description, I have links to my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.